Download the Odyssey app, 95.7 The Game. Thousands of other stations and millions of podcasts are completely free on the Odyssey app. Uh, don't forget, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. And also, if you're looking for the best Giants talk in the Bay Area, hell, the best Giants talk in the state, the best Giants talk in the nation, check out the Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys podcast. Joe Shasky, Sam Lumman. What do they have to say about that win yesterday against the Cleveland Guardians as they go to Denver, Colorado for four against the Rockies? Giants just a half game out of the third wild card spot. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe they do make the playoffs. Only God knows. Only God knows. Are you going to be alive on Sunday? Only God knows. <laughs> Are the Niners going to win on Sunday? Only God knows. Does God know if the Niners are going to win? Do the football gods know? If, do they predetermine who wins and who loses? Do they know? Do the gods really know who's going to win? Who was it? Uh, the guy who used to play for the Tennessee Volunteers, Arian Foster? Yeah. Was he the one who said everything's scripted? The NFL scripted? Yeah, he's out of his mind. Did they script that Aaron Rodgers thing? Come on. I mean, the guy didn't complete a pass. Four plays in. Four plays in. I would love to read the script of this year if that if that was truly the 49ers how it went script, down. The Trey Lance script. The Brock Purdy script. Hey, the NFL writers, we're going to find this guy at Iowa State who got benched against Iowa, who threw four <laughs> touchdowns in the biggest game in the state of Iowa, and he's going to be the last pick of the draft, and he's going to become the new guy. He's going to become the guy. Sir. Like, the script writers say that? Come on, man. Come on. I, I That does kind of bug me when people say sports are fixed. <laughs> now, point shaving could happen. There's a lot of money on the line. I do believe in that. Dwayne Fontana knows. Look, hey, <laughs> you know, if you've played ball at any level, coached at any level, Every time you're out on a field, right. on a court, you see something you ain't never seen before. Exactly. Whether it's kids, you know, high school players, adults, college, mm. you name it. Right. You see something you ain't never seen before. No doubt. And DeMarco Farr has seen a lot. He's got a Super Bowl. He's a pride of Richmond, California. John F. Kennedy High School, of course, then with the UW and won the national championship. Those UW teams were sick. Billy Joe Holbert, Mark Brunel, they had some ballers up there, man. Michigan could touch them in a Rose Bowl, but DeMarco Farr did become a Ram. We kind of did not like him when he was a Ram. Let's see those St. Louis days and the greatest show on turf. But anyway, DeMarco Farr is still doing great things with the L.A. Rams. Color commentator, sometimes on the sidelines as well. Um, Super Bowl 34 champ, of course, and apparently he's a big Star Wars fan, which is going to make Joe Jasky happy. DeMarco, big Star Wars fan? A big oh, I'm a nerd. Oh, I'm a nerd, big time. Oh, yeah. my gosh. My mission in life is to build a lightsaber. No way. Absolutely. And an X Wing fighter. Are you kidding me? Come on. Oh, Aren't you a child of the seventies? Dude. Well, Shasky's 80s. ready. He we're child of the eighties, but Shasky's ready to buy your Rams jersey. He's the biggest forty nine er fan I know. He's ready to buy your jersey right now. Well, just, just made his day. We love Star Wait, Wars. who's the biggest forty nine er fan? We Joe are. Shasky. Yeah, me. Oh, yeah. Well okay, sometimes. Well, why does that make you happy? I am not a Niners fan. Well, no, because you're a big Star Wars yeah, fan. Yeah, because he gets oh, on okay. I get on the free. Yeah, See, there's something that connects all of us. See, and Star Wars might be it. Exactly. Star Wars, might but that's be. where we draw the line. <laughs> Demarco, the force is strong with you, young man. Thank you, Demarco. <laughs> thanks for the tie today, man. We we love you, man. You've done so many great things in television and broadcasting, and obviously, week two is a big game when the Niners play the Rams. The rivalry is back. Niners have won eight straight regular season games against the Rams, but. They've got that one win in January 2021, which uh, led them to a Super Bowl. And you know what? To the shock of everybody, going up there to Lumen Field and beating the Seahawks the way they did, holding the ball for 39 minutes, Tutu Atwell, uh, Nakuya, Matthew Stafford get, didn't get touched. You got our attention now, DeMarco. The Rams, the Rams look like they're rejuvenated after having a lost season a year ago. Yeah, you know, I, look, I, I just got done watching the, the San Francisco-Pittsburgh tape and uh, you know, watching and, and seeing what the Rams did. I, I think it was far more significant going up there and beating Seattle the way they did. You changed the narrative. Most people had them tanking for Caleb Williams. And sure enough, here you go. You go up to Seattle, one of the toughest places to play, and you and you put a foot in them. Uh, watching San Francisco just absolutely brutalize Pittsburgh, I, I think everyone had that. Uh, everyone had uh, San Francisco as being one of the best teams in the NFC. So no shock there. Uh, they kind of got it going. Brock Purdy coming back was huge. Uh, but we knew that team was going to be good, but no one had the Rams doing what they did up in Seattle. No one had Puka Nakua going off. No one had Tutu Atwell going off. Uh, Matthew Stafford was uh, rumored to be on the trade block, and he played angry and played good football. So as long as they can 
sustain that, keep that going, keep that momentum going, you'll have a shot versus San Francisco coming this weekend. This guy, McVay, look, if he was my coach, I'd probably love him. I admit that on the front end, but he's not, and I can't stand him. <laughs> and, you know, he got that he got that victory. He's chest bumping in the end zone against the Niners one time. I mean, the guy was driving me completely insane. So, you know how it is. When someone's good at what they do, they really, they really drive you crazy. I, I really thought he might tuck tail and turn and, and maybe walk away from the game, maybe go to the college ranks. It feels like he's reinvigorated. Now, I know it's only week one, but you're around this guy much more than we are. What's his demeanor like over the last couple of years? Because I felt like losing last year really wore on him. Okay, so this goes back a couple of years. This is right before they won the Super Bowl when they beat the Niners. And, uh, yes, we're going to hang on to that one victory. Sure, you got them in the regular season, but they, they got the Niners when it mattered most. Sorry if that hurts. It does. But it's the this truth. was right after that. And they were asking me, guys were asking me, what's it like You know, after you won a Super Bowl? I said, it's going to feel like you walked off the parade float right in the training camp. Your offseason is short. So mm. that's exactly what it was like. Uh, the ring ceremony was delayed, so they got their rings, their Super Bowl rings, right before they went into camp. So... You're still celebrating last season, getting ready for this season. That Super Bowl hangover is real. So at the end of the year, uh, a five-win campaign, we heard about that Sean McVay may step down. This is going into Seattle, the place we just came from. So there's the specter of McVay may retire. So there's this Paul over the team. Uh, it was Bobby Wagner going back to Seattle, so they had a lift there. So they fought hard. They lost in overtime. So we're thinking this is it for Sean McVay. And we do the coaches show every Monday. I can tell you at the end of the year, that man was drained. So he never said that he was thinking about, you know, retiring or, or, or taking a TV job. But if he did, I wouldn't have blamed him. I mean, he looked really shot at the end of the year. So it was one of those things. Why don't you go take a couple of days off, recharge, and see how you feel? So I, I'm sure after about 10 days, the guy missed bowl. He's a competitive dude. Like you said, if he was your coach, you'd love him. So he got recharged. He got rejuvenated. He was ready to go. So going back up to Seattle and getting a win there. When you were about to retire there, that same spot about 12 mm -hmm. months before that or eight wow. months, whatever it was, and you get a win there, you'd be a little more excited than the average victory, <laughs> uh, especially right. when people were counting you out in the way they played. So, yeah, he's a, he's a real competitive guy. Um, if he would have taken the TV job, I wouldn't have blamed him. But I thought in my heart of hearts, this guy's going to come back. There's no way he's going to leave yeah. this football team on a 5-1 season. DeMarco, why do you think Shanahan has his number in the regular season? You know what? It's uh, it's funny. Um, San Francisco does things backwards. And you mentioned the UW days uh, when I was in the Pac-10. Mm -hmm. So I'd say nine out of those ten teams were all pro-style or some style of throwing the football. Everybody did the same thing except for one school, Oregon State, was wishbone. Mm. So you'd have to change everything you did that week facing them. And it was a, it was a pain. Yep. Everything you, you were getting ready to do or you were doing for six or eight weeks, you had to switch up just for them. So it's kind of like that when you play San Fran. Uh, most teams in the NFL, they, they run the football to set up the pass. San Francisco is the exact opposite. Their home runs are from the run. So you really have to be on your P's and Q's uh, defensively to stop that stuff. But uh, so if, if you want to ask me what gives them the most fits, it's that running game. So if you can keep Sean McVay and his quarterback on the bench watching his defense get drugged, that's going to change everything. So until the Rams fight back defensively, you you won't have a chance offensively to score against the Niners. DeMarco Farr here on the Morning Rose, former St. Louis and L.A. Ram, won a Super Bowl with the Rams, won a Super Bowl at UW. He's a pride of Richmond, California, of course, John F. Kennedy High School. So we love DeMarco. We rooted for him, even though he was a Ram. But look, it, you talk about Sean McVay and, you know, taking some time off and then coming back saying, okay, I'm recharged, I'm ready to coach. What about Aaron Donald? Because there was rumors about him retiring. And all I saw on Sunday, DeMarco, was a dude who's gunning for another DPLY. He was as dominant as he's ever been before. And I'm like, retirement? This guy could play another five years. Okay, did you see the, the highlight of Geno Smith? Yes. Oh, my God. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I've Man, never heard I that before. That thing, oh, my God. I watched, Derek, Derek, like nine nine. Times. It's hilarious. Okay, so so here's Aaron. Right? Aaron is one of the special people. There's good, there's great, and then there's special. He's, he's part of that special group. He's going to go to Canton five years after he retires. So it was never a thought in my mind that this guy was going to stop playing because he's having too much fun. He really is. Uh, you don't get to do what he does anywhere else but the football field, so you better think long and hard about leaving this because you're going to miss it once you do. 
and you shouldn't leave until you can't play anymore. And obviously Aaron can still play. So it was never a doubt in my mind that he was going to line up for this football team next season. And, and look, no matter what you're paying him, there's no way he plays anywhere else other than here. So that's, that's a great situation to be in as a football player. You watch the Brock film, uh, and to use your Star Wars analogy, I feel like the guy's just got the force, right? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, there's just something that's, it's it's like impossible to really, like, quantify, but when you watch him, he just makes plays. What's your assessment of Brock? Well, okay, going back to the old Matt Leiter days, it's easy to be good when you've got Reggie Bush standing behind you. It's easy to be good when McCaffrey standing back there. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, watching uh, Brock Purdy go through his progression, uh, the guy is definitely a credible pro. I think he might be the best quarterback you've had up there in a long time. Um, and I think he's got more upside than anyone else that has lined up there in the last 10 years. Uh, he can only get better. So he's got great pocket awareness. He's got a great whip. He can move. He can he can throw for average. He can throw uh, for distance. Uh, I thought the when he beat Patrick Peterson in the end zone. I mean, that was kind of a 50-50 ball until you slow it down. Now, that was a dime, and Ayuk mm-hmm. went up and got it. So, look, I think that guy can only get better. Um, I think that guy's emergence kind of saved the whole ship up there when you think about it with yeah. the whole Trey Lance situation. Mm-hmm. If that doesn't happen, they've got problems. Uh, so, look, we found Kurt Warner bagging groceries. Uh, you can good quarterbacks sometimes fall off trees, and you have one. So I think the 49ers have one in him. If they can keep that guy healthy, if they can play defense like they've been playing, getting after quarterbacks, and they can run the ball like they've been running it to take pressure off that quarterback, you've got something in Brock Purdy. But, yeah, I, I, look, the, the only question mark we had about San Francisco going into this year was, is Brock Purdy going to be healthy enough to play? And I think he proved that week one. No doubt about that. He sure did. Go ahead, Shasta. No, I was going to say, you referenced Kurt Warner, and that was so out of left field. And then I watched him, and I wanted to deny him for years. Eventually, I just tapped out as a Niner fan. I was like, this guy's awesome. When did you guys, the players, know? Because yeah. it feels like these players are all in on Brock. Yep. When did you guys know in that locker room that Warner was the dude? Was there a seminal moment, or was it a slow build? Okay, so he was our scout team quarterback the year before. And, you know, he, he, was a, he was an athlete. We'd play basketball. You know, he was a backup quarterback, so nobody talked to him. But he was the guy that was always nailing stuff from the corner threes. And he was real competitive. He just didn't say much because he was the backup. So at the end of 98, we're playing in San Francisco, and we're getting steamrolled again, so we pulled our starters out. There are guys giving hugs on the sidelines because they're leaving. We know it. This is the end of the road for this era. And we keep watching this guy on the field, Kurt Warner, play against the Niners. And he keeps moving the football. And he keeps matriculating the ball down the field and puts us in scoring territory. They were like, wow, this dude is fearless. He can play a little bit. He'll he'll be a great backup. Jump to next year, we lose Trent Green. He steps in. And not only does he keep the offense afloat, he actually makes it better. He's, he's, He's unafraid to make passes down the middle of the field staring down a rush. Then the veterans start to get behind him. So we knew that this guy could play the year before. We didn't know how great he could be until he yeah. actually became a starter. So I think that's where you are with Brock Purdy yeah. right now. Yeah, no, Fred Warner, Trent Williams was walking behind Brock and or walking in front of Brock at training camp last year saying, we can't wait to watch Purdy practice. And you see that by the by the way they named him captain in just his second year with the 49ers. But I also got to ask you about this, DeMarco. You played a lot of football. When you're at UW, I believe you guys are playing on artificial turf, that concrete turf up there um when you moved to st louis you played on turf now in la obviously anaheim said it was natural grass we saw aaron Rodgers fourth play of the game tears achilles we saw the niners go up there in 2020 at metlife stadium nick bosa solomon thomas jordan reed garoppolo bro they all got hurt up there how do you feel about natural grass as opposed to turf shouldn't all fields be natural grass you tell us Okay, when I was younger, I preferred turf because it was faster. And I remember having this discussion with Marshall Falk, the same thing. Uh, You don't have to work as hard for your cuts on AstroTurf. I mean, it is a fast surface, but you're going to pay for it. Uh, As you get older, you know, you're going to start to hate turf. And Andrew Whitworth was a guy. Uh, When they signed him to uh, a contract here, I said, man, how does Cincinnati ever let you go? But that's neither here nor there. Why did you pick L.A.? He said, guaranteed 10 games on grass. This is when they were playing in the Coliseum. So as you get older, that stuff becomes more and more you know, prevalent. So, yeah, uh, Aaron Rodgers, look, getting hurt up there uh, is no shock. Getting hurt at that age and blowing an Achilles really doesn't surprise me. But 
Um, you know, turf, grass, you've been doing it your whole life. Um, football's dangerous. Yeah. Uh, one wrong turn, and it could be your career. So I don't want to blame it all on turf, mm-hmm. but if you want to make it all grass, I'm not going to complain. All right, I'm going to ask you the million dollar question, and Uh-oh. I know you're going to be a homer on it. So let, let's let's hear it here. All right, huh. you're starting a team from scratch. It's a new expansion team. You're placing it in the middle of wherever you want, Hawaii, for example. Who's the coach you're taking, McVeigh or Shanahan, to start your team from scratch? Oh, I'm taking McVeigh, and that's not a homer pick. Um, well, you know what? Well, I've, I've been around Shanahan a little bit, uh, not a ton. Um, I respect how he does it because it's so funny. The same stuff his dad did. He's doing. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Same concepts. The, the way they teach it. You know, uh, look, they make the defense make the mistake, and then the running back cuts, and away we go. So that stuff, I'm impressed. You can tell he is a teacher of the game. But I got to go with my guy, McVay, man. Uh, he's real competitive. He's a guy that can talk to a 14-year veteran and a rookie in the same breath and get something out of them. So it's not just about X's and O's. He's not just a boy genius. He has been brought up in this. This is what he was born yeah. to do. And he's fun to be around. So win or lose. So I, I would have to take McVay. Is it, does McVay take these matchups personally? Because I remember Matt LaFleur a couple years ago was really psyched to beat Shanahan on a Sunday night at the Shanahan kind of flirted with Aaron Rodgers or whatnot. Does McVay take these matchups personally, knowing that they're all in Washington together and they're all like, hey, trying to carve their own pathway? Okay, these guys, uh, it's funny when you hear coaches talk. These guys have competitions on who gets to the office first on who goes to the bathroom first. Just these little quiet competitions. So, yes, of course, he takes it personally. <laughs> he wants to win. Now, it's respectful. They're all good friends. Right. You know, they have respect for each other, but no one likes to lose, especially to your friends. They talk the most trash. Man, you guys got a great broadcast team, man. I mean, Kurt seriously. Morrison. You got you down there, DeMarco. My guy from Bellarmine. Yeah, uh, 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 what's our guy's name? J.B. Uh, Long. Yeah, J.B. Long. Long. J.B. Long. We've had him on the show, of course. Maurice Jones-Drew is like a part-time coach, part-time announcer. He's on NFL Network. You guys got a good crew. Just on the wrong we team, have DeMarco. We man. It's, it's game day is fun, but the week... The week leading up is even more fun. I'm heading to those guys right now to do a show. Oh, oh that's nice. awesome, man. That's awesome. We got to check that out. DeMarco, we always love you because you're from the Bay Area. I mean that. You represented us Fox very, Sports very days. well. Yeah. Fox Sports Best Damn Sports Show. Yeah. You dub, of course. We'll do it again next time the Niners and Rams play. We'll do it. Hey, just talking football, man. DeMarco, you're a lot of fun. Anytime, man. Give me a call. Anytime. DeMarco Farr, Super Bowl champ, national champion, the pride of Richmond, California, here on the road.